mesh on your model. Uh, in this case, I'm going, to say I'm going to still be using the Mirage, but you'd be using the FD. And so you go to Prefab Instance folder, which will come as part of the Unity package, and you'll find the FST, FFD S Toll. In this case, I've got the Mirage 2000 Prefab. And all you're going to do is you're going to bring this into the Unity window. So you can see at the bottom it says what the name of it is dot prefab. Like I said, yours will be F15STOL. And you just drop it into the window. Like so. Uh, now you can see that in the top left there in the sample scene, you've got the um, twisties to allow you to see everything. You can click on all the elements within the standard. And if you click on individual items in there, you can zoom in. Okay, so you can see the helmet and you can see the cockpit, etc. So that's the, the starting place for that, really. Uh, we've got our base level uh, template in there. And now what we want to do is bring in our actual mesh. So what we're going to do, is a new, I'll cut into a new video on this. So you're going to Assets, click Import New Asset, and then you select your FBX or whatever model file you've got. And you'll see that it then imports that into the bottom screen down here. So there you go, you see the F15 there. What I'm going to do is you're going to drag that up into the window uh, and then that should appear uh, in front of it. Now what we're going to have to do is look at this and see what, what things might happen when we do an import like this. So yeah, so you take that, drop it into there. Okay, so now you can see that it's there. See on the right hand side, it's there. If you zoom out, you can see that there's a, you can move it across to roughly where the mirage is. In this case, move it around, go side on, bring it down to the right height level. Okay, so now what we can tell is that's actually roughly in the right place. It's in the right height, right area, but it's not showing up. Now if we zoom in, you can see that it's there and you can see that the, the mirror is, but you know, so we, we've actually imported it correctly. So the question is why are we not seeing it now? And as we zoom out here, you can see that it's actually too small. So this can happen when you import an FBX file. So the simple way to do that is unpack the prefab and upscale it. Usually, you, it's a matter just upscale it to 100 by 100. It depends how you've done your F, your building of the model. But if it's not working, you just have to scale it by 10 and 100 and see what you've got. You can fix this inside your export initially, but you can do it here too. So there we go. So we now have it imported into the um, unity scene um, with all the pieces kind of uh, set up correctly here you can see it's got no textures on it we do the, i'll do the textures at another stage um, however you should know how to do that if you're coming into unity i'm not going to teach people how to use unity necessarily what i will teach people is how you replace the model so we've got the flat gray model with no textures on it and that's fine for what we're trying to do at this stage now what you can see here is all the pieces are actually made up correctly. This is um, something produced by Boris. And as you can imagine with Boris doing meshes, he's created this um, with a nicely broken up pieces, with damage pieces, separated out, uh, etc. Uh, and in one of the important things I think that's worth noting in here is around how to build a mesh. It's really important to actually get your mesh correct in the first place. It is fixable inside Unity. You can do things to fix it. You have that, how I've done it when he's done them. However, really you want to make sure that when you build these in the first place you do them in an appropriate way i believe um that we will get a video at some point from um boris about how to do that better um so what i'm going to show here is you can see on this one here we're down in the aileron the port side aileron uh, and it's got a different elements of the damaged version and the normal version um so what's really important and then we go across to the flap you can see the flaps the same now What's actually important here is how you align these things. Like I say, Boris will probably do something on this, but I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. Uh, there's lights, etc. So you've got each of the individual elements. And what I'm going to show you about these, you know, oh, and then we've got the slats, obviously. Roughly. So these are all broken up into separate pieces. You need them all broken up into separate pieces, otherwise it doesn't work. What you saw there is I changed at the top from global to local. And that shows you where the pivot axis is for this part. And as you can see on the slot there, the pivot axis goes along the X axis and it's rotating along the X axis along the line of the actual flap. So you say, like in local there. And you can see here with the flap the same, 
it's on the edge but the actual axis flows along the line of the actual flat there you want it to bend or you want it to rotate from in this case it's on the z axis it doesn't really matter which axis you actually use as long as it's along the axis again the red one there is the x axis for that flap and it's along the axis yeah you can see it comes straight across there so same for that one blue one as i said a minute ago for the for that aileron you want to make sure that those are lined up great otherwise you end up with lots of problems trying to create separate objects to make them rotate easily it's doable but you don't want to do that you see and as i rotate across rotate down up and down the z axis the flap at the ailerons there moves let's go back to zero same for the flap this time it's on the x-axis and as soon as we move it along the x-axis we'll get a nice rotating flap yeah now what you are seeing is you've seen the damage model underneath because we aren't hiding that yet but that's not that's no big problem that's just a matter of doing the hide later but that's really what we want is we want all the parts that are going to move they need to be rotating along the correct part again see the canard here is on the x-axis it's structured around the midpoint so when you start to do a rotation it rotates along that angle perfect thanks to boris for that because we've done it in such a way that we can do this and the same goes for everything cockpit as well you see in this case on the back edge with the x-axis oh uh, sorry yeah the x-axis in this case being the one that's going to rotate around so that when we do a rotation we'll actually do it correctly there we go up and down that makes it so much easier when you're going to try and do these kind of things later there we go so really that's kind of trying me to to show how these work the same one though they're all separate parts yeah and again as you can see damaged parts on each of the wings etc so that's kind of a, a key part to this again rudder there along the y-axis clicking through these again on the engine carriage the same thing you want them to go up and down correctly make sure they're all aligned along that in this case it's on the x-axis so that when we fold it it'll go along the x-axis nice and easily again is fixable i won't be covering that in these videos necessarily uh, i made for you that in a separate video to show how you fix problems where you've got iffy models because that takes a whole lot of other bunch of, of work to be honest try and make your models nice in the first place and you won't have these problems so in this case what we've now actually got is we've got all the lists of various bits and pieces inside the cockpit that um, Boris has put in there just gonna, okay all of the switches done individually I mean in that case he's actually done the vertical fans individually I'm not sure that will go down to the moment of trying to animate the fans but <laughs> I'm not sure that's what Boris intended anyway Okay, so we now have it in a kind of workable state. So we now come across to the Mirage here. You can see the Mirage is there. With all the elements. And zoom over the top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull the twisty back in there. And we're going to, as you see, we can now move that across. If you highlight the top level of your model, you can move that across and roughly position it over the top of the air, over the top of the Mirage. You can see that it's roughly now I'm going to show you what happens when we do this correctly. So what we're going to do is go into the Mirage in a second. You see the different overlay there. What we're going to do is click, right click on the Mirage in a second. So right click and click Prefab Unpack. And then you get that. So it's all unpacked. It's all white, so it's no longer locked in place. And you can see that it's got all the twisted elements in this Mirage. What we're now going to do is what we're going to do is bring the F-15 inside the Mirage layer. You see that I brought underneath Mirage and it's now inside the Mirage hierarchy. So now what happens is as I move that along back as a forward does the Mirage, it moves everything because it's under that hierarchy. Okay. Now if you want to make sure that it's bang in the center and you've managed and you've built the model correctly in the first place, what we'll do is click on that level and put zero into the x-axis you put a 10 100 it moves it off to the side you put zero in it should align it exactly along the x-axis for the model now you may well have used the y-axis or z-axis for its for its stand it doesn't really make that much difference as long as you make sure that you align it to the center presuming you've built the model correctly and it has a center that's in the center now you can see it's overlaid 
roughly correct. I mean, it's actually roughly in the right place because they originally moved it around to be such. But there's a little bit of fortuitousness there. And it is actually fairly close to the center. Okay, so you kind of can see. Perfect. We're on our way to actually building an actual new model based on top of the old one. Like I said, you will get the F15 rather than the Mirage um, because we can give that away quite easily. Uh, and I can show you how it's done in here and then you can utilize that hopefully to build a variety of other models on top of it. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is change the name of our model here because we want to create a new one. I'm gonna call it the F15 base. So change that. Doesn't matter what you call it, but I've created that. And now we're still in, if we go back to the prefab uh, instance folder, you can see that's where all the other ones were, like the original Mirage. And if we take the top level and drag that down into the prefab instance, it will create us a new prefab that has everything in there built into it. And you want to do that because that's a way of saving each version and we want to keep a, a version that's locked in place each time. Every time you make changes to it, you overwrite that. You can see now that's in the prefab folder and you have your own version of that. Now you can create a dozen of them if you wanted to. And drag, and drop, drag and drop them into the Unity window and edit them set individually if you wanted to. So now I zoom back in, I double click on it and there we go. We're actually near the end of this video actually so we've imported the mesh over the top aligned it correctly made a new prefab and we're kind of on our way to the next stage of uh, of building this uh, project okay so watch out for part three where we'll start to look at swapping out the meshes